Hey guys, it's JFM Snakes here, and today I will be doing a video on how to set up a hatching Brazilian rainbow boa. As you all know, I recently picked up my Brazilian rainbow boa Quincy, and uh, today I'm going to be showing you how I set up his enclosure and uh, some basic care about them. And I know I made one of these videos quite a while back, and that was with my brother's Brazilian rainbow boa. But today I'm going to be making one of these uh, with all my own stuff. So we'll get straight into the start. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to be talking about is enclosure size and substrate. Now, getting into this tub here, this is a 9 litre rub. Now, Brazilian rainbow boas are a ground dwelling species, however, have been known to climb. So, you want to be giving them something that's not ridiculously high, however, they have a bit of climbing space available to them. But as you all know, this is my rainbow bow of Quincy. You can actually see the pearlescence of these scales, which is why they're called Brazilian rainbow bowers. Now, for substrate, I have used two so far. I've used cypress mulch, which you can just see there, and I've used um, eco earth. Now, eco earth I found got very damp, or almost wet, um, because if you didn't spray it, it wouldn't get the humidity wouldn't get high enough. However, if you sprayed it every day, the substrate would just get wet, which isn't what you want when keeping maintaining humidity. So I had to switch because when it's wet, you don't get a high humidity, it just becomes all damp in there and it just becomes all sludgy. However, if you don't, if you take a break, then the humidity doesn't get high enough, so it's kind of a lose lose situation. So I switched over to Cypress Mulch where the humidity is around 88 most of the time, which is a perfect humidity for rainbow bowls. Now, the humidity that you're going to want to be aiming for is around 90. Some people aim for 95, some people aim for 85. Um, so obviously what that means is that a lot of humidity work. Now, but rainbow bombers can get dehydrated very quickly. I mean, within a matter of hours, they can get extremely dehydrated from not having a high enough humidity. Now, a way a lot of breeders combat this is because they don't have a lot of time to go around spraying and spraying and spraying. So if you're worried about your rainbow bowl not getting a high enough humidity, I would recommend that you get one of these. This is a humid hide that I throw in there. Now all that's in here is pure sphagnum moss, nothing else, just sphagnum moss. This is a bit hard to open with one hand. Can I get that? Can I open it? There we go. Just sphagnum moss in there. Just damp sphagnum moss, um, which I've seen him in there a few times. It's just a, a hole in the top filed down so it's nice and smooth. And as you can see, the yeah, A would just go in here if the humidity is not high enough, and it's lovely and humid in there. Um, so that's a way out of breeders combat the humidity issue when they don't have time to be spraying enclosures every three or four hours. Now, another way to combat uh, humidity is to get one of those. Now that is a Reptifogger, which I will gladly demonstrate. Here. There it is. And basically all this does is just creates a nice fog in the enclosure, which it, uh, makes it nice and humid. Um, I haven't set it up in my enclosure yet, because I don't have a hole, and if I did have a hole in it, um, I don't have any mesh, which is like what a lot of people say to use so that yeah, a Brazilian rainbow bow doesn't just go up the tube and uh, get stuck all in the mechanism. So that's covered all the substrate and the enclosure size. Um, so now we'll move on to what you should have in the enclosure. Okay, so there are a number of things you should have in your Brazilian rainbow bow's enclosure. Uh, with most snakes, you should have two hides, hot and cool. Here you can see I've got both. This is my cool hide, this is my warm hide. Um, here I have a water dish. A lot of people say to go for a big water dish as it helps keep the humidity up. Um, I will be getting him a much bigger water dish when you get to an upgrade. However, at the moment, the humidity is fine, so there's no real need for me to get a new water bowl and in. Also in there, I just have this greenery decoration, which helps for cover and stuff like that. Um, I also have this little latex Komodo vine, which you can see Quincy is just curling up one down there. 
and also once again I have the humatide. Um, that is everything you'd have, it's very similar to a lot of snakes. The main key to keeping a Brazilian rainbow boa is uh, humidity and a lot of people always ask me, um, I've had about three or four requests now saying, um, could I get a rainbow boa for a first snake? There's no other snake I want, I only want a rainbow boa, but I'm scared I'm not experienced enough for one. And I'm telling you, if you are willing to um, put in the effort with spraying every three or four hours or get a fogger like this for, I think it's £43 from small reptiles, um, then they're so, such easy animals to keep. Um, I, I was stressing a, a lot about humidity when I got him. However, I just noticed it's fine. Some some breeders only keep their hatchlings at around 82-83%, uh, a few of them I've been speaking to. However, and their, their snakes are completely healthy, so it's really it's really subjective about what kind of humidity they need. I try to keep mine around 90, just to be on the safe side. But that's everything that should go in the enclosure. I'm now going to go on to heating on my heating setup. Okay, so now moving on to heating setup of Brazilian rainbow boas. Um, up here is where I keep his enclosure, as you can see, dirty. Um, and this is the heat pad I'm using. This covers about one third of the floor space. Also in there, I have a thermometer, a hum hydro uh, hydrometer, hygrometer, something like that. And then here I have my thermostat probe, which measures the temperature. We currently have it set on right around. 88 or 90, things like that. However, some rainbow boas like it a bit cooler, um, around 86. However, when I set it on 86, it wasn't really hitting the spot. Uh, so I've turned it up to about 90 and it averages around 88. Um, this heat map's currently on blast because, well, the probe hasn't been on it. And uh, this is basically how I set it up. It's extremely simple. It's just a heat map into a thermostat. I, think this, I had this tape on that I was using to tape it down, but I can get rid of it. Okay, so um, yeah, this is basically where we go, so I'll put him on now and you can see it. Okay, now you can see that he's back on his heat pad here. It goes about a third of the enclosure. Here he is down here. And I'm just going to put everything back in the enclosure and you can see it when it's all made up. Okay, so here's the enclosure all made up. Here you can see warm hide, I've fixed it with the other warm hide. So this is now the warm end and this is now the cool end. Plant. Uh, climbing thing. I've just sprayed it down with my spray bottle, which is actually down there, um, and a water bowl. So I'm just going to go ahead and put him in. There he is. Okay, now I would actually recommend if you're going to get a rainbow bow that you get a snake up like this one. This one was £1.90 off of Amazon, so they're not expensive at all. Now this isn't really because their bites hurt, this is just because if they were to bite you, um, it would kind of do damage to their teeth, which you don't really want. There we go, just get him up. Just placing him straight into his enclosure. Oh, he's gone, there we go. He's gone. And uh, they're really useful, so I'd recommend just using them. And so yeah, this is how to set up a Brazilian rainbow boa enclosure. If you have enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe. Uh, and it's been Jason Snakes.